Remember when phones were stuck in the loop, barely improving year after year? Well, that's changed. In just one year, we have achieved bigger upgrades than we have in years. And it's not AI, we have something far better. So what happened? Firstly, let's talk about batteries because they have just had a huge leap. I wanted to compare how the batteries have improved over the years up until now when we had a sudden change. And for that, I've picked a OnePlus lineup. The first five phones or so barely had any improvements. It wasn't looking good. But then, after the OnePlus 7, things really started to pick up. Because we started to see batteries over 4000 milliamps, and even reaching 5000 on the OnePlus 10 Pro. However, it started to become a problem. If you take a OnePlus 8 and compare it to the 10 Pro, just look at the weight difference. But it didn't stop there, because two years later, the OnePlus 12 was even heavier. Phones started to become really thick and heavy. Now obviously this isn't all because of bigger batteries. Phones just overall had bigger screens, bigger cameras, and more components. It was becoming clear that if we just put bigger batteries in our phones, they will become too heavy. We have reached the limit. Or have we? The OnePlus 13 just had a massive jump to 6,000 milliamps, and unbelievably, it became a lot lighter and thinner. And not just them, because basically every phone coming out right now is having this insane battery growth spurt. The Xiaomi Redmi K80 has an even bigger battery than the OnePlus 13, and it's even thinner and lighter. It's even thinner than the iPhone 16 Pro, and the battery is over 80% bigger. And I'm not even done yet, the Red Magic 10 Pro has a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. What is going on? Actually, it's not a complete mystery. I'm not gonna get too technical here, but most gadgets that you've had in the last couple of decades, like your phones, your laptops, and your mum's vibrators, probably use a lithium ion battery. But in 2023, Honor has released a Chinese variant of their Magic 5 Pro, which had a silicon carbon battery. So they have a higher energy density than the lithium ion, which means that we can have higher capacity batteries without taking up more space. Or we can have the same battery capacity but make the phone thinner. But why would you want thinner phones? Well, foldables. They need to be thin, and Honor has destroyed the competition. Their Magic V3 with the new battery folded up is 9.2 millimeters, and it has a 5100 milliamp hour battery, which is the same as a normal phone. Whereas the Galaxy Z Fold 6 is 12.1 millimeters, and it only has a 4400 milliamp hour battery. Not even close. And this is a really big deal because people really care about batteries. If you get a phone with 7,000 milliamps, it will last you like five years, which is how long it's been since your dad left. It's okay, you can dip your Oreo into something else. Hopefully Samsung can catch up and use this new tech so they can put bigger batteries in their base models without needing to buy the Ultra model to get the best battery life. That is unless Samsung is still traumatized by their Note 7, which was known for exploding. But there's more, the new processor, the Snapdragon 8 Elite. It's not just faster, it's not just more FPS. It's actually an exciting upgrade that further improves battery life through its efficiency. Now we all know that the new Snapdragon is roughly 30 to 40% faster than the last year's Snapdragon. But what does that actually mean? Well, if you look at these results when playing Genshin Impact, you can see that the last gen processor needed about 8 watts to play at only 53 fps, whereas the new processor only needed 5.9 watts to play a stable 60 fps, which is at least 26% more efficient. Just look at the temperatures after 30 minutes of gaming. You get an improvement from almost 50 degrees down to 42 degrees, from almost burning your skin to actually kind of playable. This is partially thanks to the new cooling system that OnePlus has been using since the OnePlus 12, called the Dual Cryo Velocity Vapor Chamber. It it sounds confusing, but it does the job. And other companies really need to catch up because if you look at Apple, what are you even doing? And if you actually used your brain for once, you would realize that less power equals less heat equals less battery drain. This video shows how the OnePlus 12 lasts just under four hours when playing Genshin Impact, whereas the OnePlus 13 lasts five and a half hours, which is a 40% increase, which is huge. Although the difference is not that big when you just scroll Reddit for 17 hours a day. I know you need help. So if you combine the new battery technology and the super efficient processor, you get a really exciting year for battery life. But sometimes it's not about battery life, sometimes the performance matters too. And this is mostly because of emulation. And I'm not just gonna say the PS2 or the PSP, because you were able to emulate those consoles on your phones for years. And since then, phones 
obviously got more powerful. But if you were able to play those games back then, then buying a new phone now doesn't really make a big difference. You just didn't really need a more powerful phone until now. It's all because of an app called the Winlater. This is an Android app released in the mid-2023 that lets you run Windows games and applications. Yes, you heard it right. Windows games on your phone for free. So what's the catch? Well, it's an open source app which doesn't have an official application on the App Store. So you have to get this from GitHub. You have this very old and outdated looking version of Windows. It's running a translation layer to run Windows applications on ARM devices such as your phone. So you're likely to run into a bunch of compatibility issues like games not performing well or straight up just not working at all. Take a look at this, near 60 FPS on a phone and this is not entirely down to hardware limitations. This is because you lose performance when you emulate games because there's translation layers. But the fact that we can already do this on an app that's been released for less than two years is pretty mind-blowing. And this is really important because we are finally benefiting from our phones being extremely powerful. Okay, this is really difficult to compare, but the new Snapdragon 8 Elite should be just as powerful as the Radeon 780M, which is around a GTX 1060, which is already more powerful than the Steam Deck. And I know the platforms are completely different, but it gives you a vague idea of how powerful our phones really are. But just for now, it's not a good idea to just go out and buy the fastest phone because there's a few problems. You actually can't install Steam and just download any game you want. You still need a PC so you can put those games on an external drive and then plug it into your phone. And for that, you need DRM-free versions of those games, which are versions of games that don't have any restrictions and can be copied around freely, which means that you'll most likely need to buy those games on GOG, even if you already own those games on Steam. And because of their compatibility and instability issues, I wouldn't recommend it yet. But the potential is astronomical because we wouldn't need to wait for games to be ported to Android which never happens anyway. We could just download any game we wanted to. But let's get away from all the technical stuff and talk about designs. Because recently, phone companies have made some pretty damn good design choices. So ever since we were introduced to the Pro model phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro or the Pixel 6 Pro, we got these super annoying and curved displays like, bro, who thought this was a good idea? You get these annoying reflections and now the phone is more likely to break. And I know, the first curved screen was on the Galaxy Note Edge back in 2014. And then the Galaxy S lineup adapted it with the S6 Edge in 2015. But the difference is, is that back then you could just avoid it, just buy a different phone. But nowadays, almost every pro model phone has a curved screen and it's like the dumbest decision ever made. Because if you look online, basically everyone hates curved screens. However, things have changed. Because phone companies just suddenly woke up and they were like, Hmm, you know what? We have a slight feeling that people don't like curved screen phones. And now, screens are becoming flat again. The Pixel 9 Pro is completely flat. The S24 Ultra, the Xiaomi 15 Pro, and the OnePlus 13 are now all nearly flat screens, whereas previously, they all had curved screens. They finally realized, enough is enough. Why am I still holding this? Also, as of 2024, Xiaomi, Google, and OnePlus now all use an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. Just like Samsung has for years. It creates a 3D image of your fingerprint using sound waves instead of just lighting up the sensor and capturing a 2D image, meaning that the phones unlock even faster now. And in conclusion, this year, phones are way more exciting than they were in the last couple of years. Phone companies just made so many right decisions this year. And although it might not be worth it if you're upgrading from last year, if your phone is two to three years old, there's actually something to be excited about and it might be worth upgrading.